really cool photo and uh, we'll here talk about the colors and okay so see this photo here this is a really cool example everything is nice this is a perfect photo manipulation perfect example of how you, you you shouldn't make photo manipulation so this isn't this is obviously not good but uh, light is taking the big role in 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 everything in any kind of photography not just photo manipulation with the light you can set a mood obviously with the colors too but light is really important because without the light you will have black black images the light will set the mood set uh the the the, the overall colors the a lot of things depends on sunset it ha sunset has usually warm tones and uh, uh more saturated colors and etc and different different uh, uh for example the, the noon light is has totally different kind of uh, look it's more cool look etc and uh all the all the elements in the photo with photo manipulation needs to have the same lighting conditions all the elements needs to have the same lighting conditions so here you can see that this a model right here and the background are completely off the model has some kind of soft light there are no hard shadows they are not in here. She is also much less contrasty than the background. And this is something that we cannot use. There is a trick how you can make this happen. If you need to do it, I will show you. But at the first glance here, this is unusable. So basically, also the, the model is completely different uh, perspective. The model is shot with some telephoto lens and the background is shot with uh, with. Uh, um, wide angle lens but i will talk about that how you can get away with these two this is totally extremes telephoto lens and wide angle lens see see right here the model is shot with really high telephoto lens the background is compressed it's a uh, big uh, depth of uh, a shallow depth of field here etc but the background is something completely different everything is practically in focus etc so uh, let's go back to blender because here i can explain you about the light a little bit better there are so many uh different uh, type of lighting scenarios and what you need to know about the lights is that first of all there are two type let's say there are two type of lights they are soft and harsh lights so soft lights are basic lights from the big light source like a sky cloudy overcasted sky uh, and uh, big light source big soft boxes etc so here I will show you on, on this example right here. We have one light. And uh, if I move this light, you will see this is the, the, the light right here. So if I move this light left and right, you will see the shadows are moving too. Okay. If I move it up, the shadows are getting shorter, etc. If I move it down behind the model, the shadows are longer and longer and longer but the shadows are really harsh as you can see those are let me zoom this a bit like like this you can see how shadows are harsh and that's because the light source is really tiny compared to the model so if the light source is bigger the shadow will be softer let me demonstrate that so now the light source is zero meters diameter but if we make it bigger and bigger and bigger you can see the shadow starts become softer and softer and if it's really really big the shadows are barely be visible they will be really soft why because light basically what are the shadows shadows are uh how do you say that they are uh finding an english word so absence of light so basically if we make it back to the zero this part right here this part right here this part right here the light is not casting there because some object like this cone or the model or the cube are blocking the light and this is practically absence of light and one another important thing about the shadows is i see that all the time people are using same mistake they are making shadows black shadows are not black shadows are the same color as the uh, surface where the shadow is casted why well because let me show you here really quickly okay like this the floor is currently gray and the shadow is darker gray version but if we have the floor some kind of bluish you will see 
the shadow will be darker version of that blue floor because floor is still blue blue tone but there is less light casted on that part of the floor so that means the floor will not be black there will not be black it will be the same tone but just just darker version of that tone so if we change the this to something yellowish or greenish or whatever you can see the shadows are still not black they're green but dark version of green so if we go and take a snapshot of this and go to the Photoshop and let's paste it here for example it doesn't matter let's let's make it a bit bigger and if I go right here to the color picker and see this is this is green tone but this is also a green tone just darker green tone than than this see this is green this is green we have all the green tones also this part is not black and this is not black this is just a version of uh, of a gray a gray tone so remember that this will improve your composite a lot shadows are never black except when they are but they are black only in this kind of situation i will show when there are no ambient light for example you're in dark cellar or dark room and you have just i don't know a flashlight and flashlight is lighting yourself and uh, we are lighting the, 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 the subject with the flashlight, so there are no ambient light. And we can see now the shadows are black, but because there are complete absence of light that is casting on that part of the floor or surface that are uh, shadow, where the shadows are. So that's the only time where you can practically use the black shadows or when you have really like a dark floor. You have, for example, like, like this, you have floor that is dark dark gray and then you can say okay this is like a black shadow and if the the light is maybe like this brighter here it will cast stronger shadow especially here in the where the model is contacting the floor and then you can say okay we can make black shadow but usually shadows are just darker version of the color of the surface where they are casting on casted on Okay, another thing for the for the lights uh, is yeah another really important thing before before I continue about the lights because uh, the lights are responsible for colors so a different type of light will produce different type of colors more saturated less saturated washed out uh, more contrasty colors etc and when you're doing photo manipulations, you want to make sure that uh, everything is proper, the colors, the lights, the perspective and everything. And I recently got a question from, from uh, one of my subscribers asking me uh, for, for some solution for his problem. And the problem goes like this. Uh, he's having great photo on his monitor and uh, he crank up the brightness all the way to 100%. But when he export that file to Instagram, for example, or Facebook and watch it on, on a mobile phone, he see the colors are completely different. The colors are washed out, the uh, contrast is different, everything is different. And that's because when you're doing this kind of stuff, when you're doing any kind of design, photo retouching or anything else, you need to have a proper monitor because uh, if you have some bad monitor or bad laptop screen and you want to have to rely on that to have a proper colors on all other devices you cannot do that because monitors are probably the most important tools at least for me in this uh, world of, of uh, design of digital art because everything is here the contrast the colors the brightness everything is here and uh, i want to take a moment to, to, to say that me as a as a ambassador for bank i'm really enjoying in bank monitors and uh, I'm using them for years now and I highly recommend it to everybody out there to use their monitors, not just because I'm the ambassador for BenQ, but uh, in reality, I really, really love them. I have SW and PD series. PD series are for designers, for pro professional designers and SW series are uh, monitors for, for uh, the photo retouching, etc. And let me show you here really quickly. Uh, like this see how many tabs i have okay so uh, these are pd series monitor and i have this one right here i'm working currently on, on on this monitor right here 
PD3200U, and I really love this one. Uh, the color accuracy is amazing. The, uh, what I really love about the monitor is that it has a hotkey pack where you can easily switch between different color space, sRGB, um, maybe you want uh, black and white, which is really important for me. I will show you later why black and white is really important when you're doing photo manipulation, especially color, color uh, correction and color grading. And also it has a bunch of other different uh, workspaces here. And uh, the color accuracy and also the, the eye retention of these monitors is amazing. Also it has what I really love to use, uh, like I like to say it, uh, it's a night mode, but it's, uh, uh, it's a mode uh, that, that makes your screen a little bit more um, yellowish. And then you have absence of that blue light that is making your eyes, that is hurting your eyes a little bit. And uh, when I'm reading something, when I'm doing something that is not related to photo retouching, etc., I like to use uh, that mode and enjoy in, uh, in uh, the screen and the sharpness of the screen while reading something much, much better. And my eyes are really enjoying that. And uh, for everybody, uh, who is uh, currently here on webinar, as Vicente already said at the beginning, <clears throat> uh, we have a special discount of 10% on a BenQ store, uh, online store, and uh, that's only for next seven days or so. But unfortunately for, for uh, people from Serbia, uh, there is no discount at this moment of time, and we are working on that. So uh, we, will, we will have something probably in the future. You can see this guy is familiar for you. Some, some, some say it's expert, I don't know. But uh, seriously, guys, I really love these monitors. I have uh, SW, as, uh, I have SW271C. Uh, uh, and uh, what I like about, uh, and, and I have uh, another one, PD3420Q. Uh, it's a widescreen monitor. And what I like about these monitors is I'm using, a, currently I'm using MacBook Pro. Uh, to do my work because I, I'm switching places to two offices to say I work from home and from studio. And uh, I have just one cable, one USB type C cable. And uh, using that cable, I'm, I'm uh, able to power the computer and also to uh, have my uh, monitor uh, screen shared on the big monitor here on my laptop monitor to big monitor and have everything. So basically, I have two screen setups, laptop and uh, big uh, uh, monitor uh, PD3200 tube and with one cable, no, no a need for charger, no need for different uh, cables for anything else. Everything is really, really nicely set up with, with that. Okay, so again, I really highly recommend you guys to check out the BenQ monitors because uh, considering the quality and the price, they're really unbeatable. I, I really stand uh, behind them. Okay, so let's go back here and let's talk about a little bit about uh, the light sources. So we have two types of light sources, natural and artificial. By natural, I mean we have sun and by artificial, we have some light source like we have here, some, some light bulb or whatever. So basically, when we have artificial light source, like we have it right here, you can notice that the shadows are not faced in the same direction. So the, because the light source is right behind the main model, you can see that the shadow from the model is faced straight forward. The shadow from the cone is a little bit left. This is a little bit right. And that's because the light is uh, going omnidirectional in all directions and hitting the, the light beams are not parallel, they are going all around and they're hitting the cone from this direction and the shadow is going there, the cube for this direction and the, the model from just behind and the shadow is going in the front of the model. But if we have a sun as a light source, let me show you right here, basically we can say the everything is parallel. Why? Well, because the sun is really, really, really uh, far further away from the model and from the objects and the light beams become almost parallel. And that's why when, when there is a sunny day outside, you can make the shadows to face in the same direction as you can see. So if we move the sun 
a little bit. So let's let's go right here. And if we move the sun to a certain direction, for example, a little bit to the right, maybe a little bit down, etc. You can see the shadows are always going to be almost parallel. They are parallel. So you need to, to take uh, that in consideration if you're making photo manipulation with the uh, uh, environment outside you want to have this kind of setup the parallel shadows but if you have some kind of artificial light like this light bulb right here then you need to consider that and let me show you really quickly move it a little bit up so you need to say okay we have a small light source right here we have the object here how we should know where the shadow is really easily just draw a line from the light source towards the object and that's where the shadow will be facing on all the objects right there also you have if you have multiple light source that's also important so we have that and the sun we will have multiple shadows and also that you need to have uh, in in your photo manipulations in order to make it realistic so we have the sun and or we have two different light sources we will have something like that for example we have we have the, 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 the artificial light source and we have another one somewhere here but this one the second one is maybe soft light so we will have different light sources if, if we zoom here you will see we have really soft light from this light source but harsh light from the first light source but this is really really uh, barely visible shadow why well because this light source is more it's bigger and it's washing out the shadow here basically it's casting light here and then the absence of light what is shadow is not as much pronounced as before without this this uh, not this but without this light source and also what i like to say about light source is that there i like to say there are three types of shadows in, and that's really important try to remember that so let's go back to Photoshop. There are three types of shadows, and I like to grow, uh, to to like say that there is a contact shadow, there is a main shadow or key shadow from the main light source, and there is an ambient shadow from all other light sources out there. And now I will show a real example here how we can create those uh, three types of shadows pretty much easily in Photoshop. But before we do that, I want to address one issue that I'm seeing all the time in photo manipulations. When we have a model like this, so let's go here to the model and let's select the model. People are usually making shadows like that, creating a new layer, filling that layer with black. Perfect. And oops, I don't want this. And then they are doing just this, like. okay they are doing just this i'm like oh this is my shadow and do whatever or flip flip vertical let's say okay this is my shadow i have this and i can move it here and perfect or here or here well that's not good because this is not how how the light works you can do that only in one one uh, situation and that's Let's go back to Blender. And that's if the light source is right behind or in the front of the object. So here, where is my light source? It's right here. So here, we have a light source behind and about the object. And we can make selection of the object and then, but still you can see this is not how the shadow looks. It's a little bit different. Why? Well, because the light is closer to the object and uh, it's not ideal position but if you bring it more further away from the from the object like like this and a little bit up like 45 degrees then we can approximately have the same shadow as the silhouette of the model then you can select the model and just put the shadow down and that's it maybe make it a little bit stretch towards the the end of the shadow but if the light is more closer to the object uh, closer 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 come on like this 
and a little bit down, you will see the shadow behaves completely differently. And if the, the light is more above the object but behind, the shadow is shorter. So uh, it's not good to do this kind of stuff. I will show you now how you can approximately draw a realistic shadow for the model. But have in mind that uh, uh, you can, if you don't have any kind of 3D software to see what kind of approximate the shadow will be, you can use anything. You can use some object, whatever, something like this, and just use a flashlight or a lamp and just go and play with different angles, different orientation of the light, and learn how the lights are casting shadow from the object. So learn how different position of the lights are affecting the shadows, different shapes and different, different uh, also um, softness of the shadow, let's say like that. Because if the light is really, really close to the model, the shadow will be softer. So let, let, let's say, for example, if we put the light down, and closer to the model right here see how soft the shadow is comparing to comparing to this yeah we need to make the light brighter but comparing to this this is much harsher shadow than than previous one than this one so because the light source is now bigger comparing to the model when the light source is further away from the model it's it's tinier and that's the, where the, when the shadow where the shadow is harsher. So let's go back to the Photoshop and let me show you on this example. So here we will do something. We will create a shadow. So let me first pa, 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 pa. let me first show you this. For example, we have let's. See, for example, we have a smaller light source. Let's use this brush. Oh, okay, perfect. We have a smaller light source and we have some kind of object here. Something, maybe cube. I don't know, it doesn't matter. So the shadow, the length of the shadow will be, it can be easily calculated. So the length of the shadow is just by making the line from the object towards the model and this is the floor and then when it's hitting the floor this is it this is this part so this of my my steady hands this part will be like that and then we will have something like that we cannot see behind but this will be our shadow if the light source is a little bit more down so if the light source is like here for example then the lines will be longer and the shadow will hit somewhere here. So also let's let's go for for this to so hit here. So we need to make a line here and to hit every single of these. And you know, make like that, and we will have a longer stretch shadow right there. So that's how you should approximate the length of the shadow, but the softness of the shadow if the shadow will be harsher or softer. You need to understand for real life situations by practicing, by looking in the shadows and light sources. And if the light source is bigger, the shadow will be softer and, uh, and opposite. So here, basically, we have different light sources. We Let's say that we have this light source here and here that are not so bright and they're a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. And we have one smaller light source right from above here. And we have one light source that is really soft from front left. So we basically have four light sources. And for the simplicity of this example, I will cancel this one. I will not use this light source. So basically, let's say this is a three light source scenario. And what I will do here, I will first say, okay, we have a contact shadow and this is C for contact. And contact shadow is the just tiny bit of shadow that is presented here on the contact from the object and the floor. And it's usually harsh shadow. So I will use, because it's harsh shadow, I'll use soft brush, logically. Okay, I will use a little bit harsher brush. And as I already said, the shadow is never black or white. So we cannot use black. But what I will use, I will use the tone of the floor. So maybe this. 
and then put this layer into multiple blending mode. And now, see, we can make really nice color of the shadow. It's not black, but it's dark, it's shadow. Okay, so basically, this shadow should look, I'm, I'm now rushing this. It will not be like if I'm spending several minutes for just this, etc. And have in mind that in photo manipulation, you need to, you need to invest time in order to, to have a great result. I have so many comments on my YouTube videos. Ah, oh, your videos are too long. 20 minutes video is too long. Well, make a photo manipulation for 20 minutes. I challenge you. So, uh, you know, uh, it's not long, but a one hour video, it's not long because if you want to learn something and to make photo manipulation in one hour, that's crazy low amount of time. This is something that takes time and uh, this is not for you if you're, you're not enjoying this. If you're enjoying this, then great. So this, as you can see, small contact shadow, just, just to glue the object to the surface a little bit. Maybe this can be a little less, so a little bit more here where the bigger gap is, but a little bit, a little bit less here, just a small tiny contact shadow. Sometimes this shadow is more pronounced, less pronounced, etc. So depends on the situation. So something like, you can say something like this. Okay, and from this, this is not visible. But remember, sometimes will help a lot, it will be really visible. Then the next shadow is uh, key light shadow. So we need to define what is what is key light. And here I want to say my key light for this situation is this this light. What is going on here? Why I not drawing here? The mystery, the mystery of Photoshop. Oh, because I have a razor, not a brush. That happens. Okay, my key light is light that is hidden here a little bit back and the shadow will be something like it will go something like oh let's go on umbrella so it will go something like this okay and the light source is somewhere somewhere there so somewhere right here out of the frame okay and it's really easy to draw a shadow like that so what i will do i will use the same tone from the floor, put this into multiply blending mode and use this brush a little bit harsher, like 80 or so percent. Perfect. And I will go and just make a line a little bit bigger like that. And then just follow the contour of this. So this is a little bit wider here. And then we have like it's going like that. And just practice and see, okay, we have a longer line here like this but it will need not be as long as this because the light is it even more above the model not 45 degrees when the light is 45 degrees uh, uh, compared to the model then the shadow will be the same length as the model as the object but if it's higher above then shadow will be will be shorter if it's lower below the shadow is, will be longer so we'll make something like that and that and uh, then it's going straight like this and blah blah and we have a big mess don't worry we'll fix it so i'm rushing a little bit because of the time sake but we can we can add this on the other side it's not visible from this side but maybe it's visible from from the light perspective so maybe light will will see something here but i know this umbrella there is nothing on the other side but you know sometimes maybe there is something here you cannot see from from your uh point of, of view but from the light point of view maybe it's visible okay so something like that and it needs to be a little bit a little bit uh wider obviously so wider wider here and wider wider here just a little bit like like that okay it's not perfect i know but for the this example it will go i will come back to this let's draw a shadow from the model so basically we need to follow this so we have this and uh, have in mind that this is artificial light source so this shadow will be more towards the left maybe maybe i i didn't make it right maybe i should just move it a little bit 
towards the left like that okay and then this one will be more more uh, towards here the front so i want this to be a little bit more towards the left just a little like that okay and to move it like this all right now let's go and draw this one so it's going to be here and this is the shoe then we have the pants and another part of the pants like that then here we have okay from from this one we have also we have shadow from here and it will be empty here it'll go something like this and then try to imagine this will go something like probably like that or some something 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 and also what is really important is that only thing you need to do here is to fool the viewers the viewers eyes so nothing fancy this is this part it's going maybe a little bit more like that and then up maybe a little bit more than up and uh, this is going like like this like this for example for example it's not 100 percent accurate but oh, we need to invest a little bit more time thinking about the shadow but for this it will work i will fix few few things here don't worry so up, 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 up. it looks like this and i don't like the shoe part here so maybe maybe like this and maybe more like more like this oops Gosh. maybe more like that i don't know so for example let's say that is decent but not right let's say that this is decent okay so this is okay and what i like to do here i like to add a layer mask and uh, go with really soft brush maybe 10 percent opacity and make the front part of the shadow less opaque more transparent okay why well because there is a front light source that is coming towards the the shadow and uh, the it will it will wash out that part of the shadow it will cast the light on the floor so this will be washed out oops let's go back here so something like this and always the more the darkest part is the part nearest nearest the subject okay and also what i like to do here is to make this a little bit more blurry because it's artificial light source and it's a little bit not so not so tiny I will use a trick. I will use the smudge tool and just, just smudge it left and right a little bit. There are so many ways how you can do it. You can blur it, etc. But I like this. It's fast and it's a decent way to do it. So just I'm just smudging it. And I can also improve the shadow. Oh, okay, this is perfect. And we have another type of shadow and that's the ambient shadow so this is this is a key key shadow and we have another one and that's the ambient and i will show you that k for ambient that's the all other shadow so we have well, it can be crazy but uh, we'll we'll simplify it we have the shadow from this light source and now i will be really fast i will be really fast i will just show you what i mean by this so the shadow from this light source will be longer shadow because the light source is a little bit lower down below so the shadow will go the shadow will be like like this it will go right there from from the shoe and maybe like here and from here somewhere i don't know somewhere here and here and 
something like like that. I'll fill this up. Don't worry, it will not be a mess like it seems right now. So, but bear in mind that I'm rushing now. So this is one. Maybe, maybe let's let's stretch it a little bit here, and then fix this portion right there. Okay, maybe this will be um, maybe more like more like that, more like that. Let's say, and because of everything, this shadow will be barely visible, like this. Also, it will be more more blurry, so more soft, like this. more soft and I want to make it even less visible because this light source is not so bright as the key light. Also uh, we have to create another, usually I will, I will do it on the same layer but now ambient number two, let's make it in another layer. We need to create another shadow that is from the main light, the light from the front and it will go somewhere in this direction. So something like, like this. No. This. And you don't need to be precise. This is this is really to fool the viewers, the viewers' eye. So maybe like like this, and this will be barely visible. You will see why I'm making it like this. But also we need to do the same for the umbrella. But let's say this is like that and uh, make it make it like this make it crazy and uh, pop, pop, pop. let's make this part more transparent so something like that and everything over the past this will be barely visible shadow because this is really strong light and this will wash out everything so just there and also this one this needs to be more washed out like like this so we have we have this this one can be a little, even less visible so something like that and also what yeah what i missed here is 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 so here because it will come all the way down okay and also the same we need to do with the umbrella so let's let's quickly you now just the, for for the final impression here here this is our umbrella to be even less visible okay eraser fix certain parts perfect make this less visible with a soft brush and blur it I want to blur it uh, not the mask but not the mask but the layer itself okay and another one should be right here okay another one should be right here from 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 this light source so something like here like this and this is barely visible because you can see wait i'm using i'm using the wrong tool uh, that's so uh, me okay so here like this Okay, and I will finish it here because I will make it even less visible just for, for fun for the, this purpose. And this is barely gorgeous. Okay, so you can see these are three types of shadows that we have here. And uh, this is before and this is after. And it's much better because we are gluing the model to the floor. And bear in mind, this is really fast work. 
it can be improved a lot but this is it and uh, this is how you're making your composite look realistic because you're paying attention to all light sources create a shadow from all light sources and obviously invest much more time than i'm doing here and the last thing are colors they are different type of uh different type of colors <laughs> let's say let, let's say like this so basically we have we have subtractive colors we have we have a, uh, additive colors and subtract uh, additive colors are basically rgb space that means where you when you're adding all the colors red green and blue you're getting the white color and subtractive when you added a cyan yellow and magenta you're getting black black color uh, at the middle let me show you really quickly really quickly here so basically we have red green and blue color and if we mix green and red we will get yellow right that's that's it if we mix green and blue we will have cyan and if we mix blue and red we will have magenta and if we mix all three together we will have white color so this is this is a color theory and i just want to pull another poll here so i'm curious uh, how many of you guys are familiar with with the color theory so let me let me uh, put it on the screen right here okay are you familiar perfect let's see the votes perfect okay great great so let, let's let's share the results all right so basically more than 50 percent of you 53 percent of you are really familiar some what 40 and no seven percent okay so plenty of you already know almost all of you are heard about color theory so basically uh it's a science about colors how uh what is the best way to mix color together to make color harmonies to make colors that works the best together so i will i will show you a little bit of that for you guys who are here for the first time so basically these three colors are the colors that are we are using the most like a basic colors in in digital world rgb space red green and blue and this is how they are mixing and when you mix all three colors together as i already said you're getting pure white color it's crazy mixing red green and blue and uh, you will say we will get something but actually it's not it's blue it's a uh, it's white it's white so it's really crazy but it is how it is don't ask me why ask some people who invented this all right i'm joking but uh we have something that is called color wheel and uh, color wheel is uh, this okay let's make it mm. No, let's make it like this. And uh, I'm using that a lot. I really love this and it's a completely free tool. You can go to color.adobe.com and uh, go to color wheel. And uh, color wheel represents all the color from the color spectrum. And uh, there are something that is called calling this called color harmony. So how you're mixing color together, colors together in order to create nice pairs of colors. So basically, as you can see here on the left side, we have analogous colors. So those are colors that are neighbor color on the screen, on the wheel uh, of, of colors. So you can see all of these colors are working nicely together. And it's almost like monochromatics, almost. I say almost because it looks like that, but monochromatic is just one color and the shades of that tone. This looks like that, if you see, but it has a little more shades of the neighbor's color so uh, this is really interesting when you create photos with that uh, what is really good thing about uh, this website you have here you can explore some some examples here as you can see so uh, there are plenty of that also we have some trends here and you can see some fashion trends graphic design illustration etc etc a lot of things here and what is really cool you can see what kind of colors are used so these are analogous colors here like as you can see uh, basically this can be a monochromatic too but uh, it's it's see like this like this really cool and you can learn a lot from the this website and get inspired for certain colors so let's go back to create and there are some 
complementary colors, so they're the opposite colors on color spectrum, and these colors work nicely together. This is orange and teal look, famous looks from movies, and there are a lot of lot of movies that are implementing this look also. Really cool complementary colors are uh, red and 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 uh, green, etc., blue and yellow. Also, we have triads, so that means that these colors are. 120 degrees apart and uh, these three colors really nicely going together with certain looks etc we have split complementary so basically light complementary but the opposite colors are split into two neighbor colors so you can stretch them a little bit not like this this is like analogous but like this usually like two next colors and also double split complementary square it's like a cross and compound, etc. But you can go here and play with this and get inspired which colors work great together. So let me show you really quickly. Uh, wait, it's not here. Let me open. Let me show you some really cool example here. Dun, 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 this one. Okay. So this is this is photo straight straight from the web, original photo. I don't know if it's, if it's original from the camera or it's edited, but it's a photo that I've found online and uh, let me demonstrate some, some colors harmonies here. So if you paint different colors here, if you change some colors, you can get, for example, complementary colors. So basically like orange and teal or bluish and orangey look with this, see, different look. Also, we can have a split complementary with blue, yellow and a little bit of, of uh, the, the reddish desaturated tone and also we have triads so we have green orange and blue and you can see with just a little bit of color science with a little bit of color theory color harmonies we can go from this look to any of our uh, different looks that are in my opinion much more pleasing to the eye and uh, it will leave more impact to the viewers uh, than this than this original original file so maybe this or I don't know maybe this or this but you can you can play you can change to completely different different tones and uh, have different kind of results so that's really important and what is really important about colors in photo manipulation is that all colors in the scene needs to be matched together uh, so so to have impression that everything belongs to one scene so you, you cannot have for example here you cannot have this guy like this here and uh, and let me just uh, leave it like that and you can say okay he's he's not, he looks like he's belong belonging here but it's not because if we zoom this you can see that maybe you can see i don't know depends of um, how your eye eye strained to look the color but maybe you can see that he has a lot of magenta tint compared to the lot of greenish tint of the background and now i will tell you why i love hotkey pack on these monitors because I have one button to sRGB color space, another button to black and white. And why black and white is important if you cannot see that now, if I, if I press this because you will still see uh, the RGB color space, but I will demonstrate here. I can go right here and use black and white. And I love to watch my composite in black and white from time to time just because I'm resting my eyes from crazy colors and when I come back to the color mode I can see mistakes better I can see colors better also when I'm working with the lights when I'm painting light when I'm making uh, matching the color matching the contrast matching the lights I like to work in a black and white version because then I am eliminating all the colors and all distractions from the colors and working in this mode so now when we go back to the colors you can probably see more magenta here i don't know but you will see now when we match match the colors there are so many techniques that you can use to match the colors you can use simply color balance and uh, use color balance to tweak the colors and match the model to the background you can use a different different tools right there but what i like to do and i like to use mostly if you're not good in intuitive color matching so matching by just looking at what are you doing then there is like one one really cool scientific way of matching colors and uh, i will show you that right now 
maybe you already know that, maybe not, but it's really cool technique. So what I like to do, I like to go to the model here and I like to create one empty layer that I will fill it with 100% of 50% gray. So fill it with 50% gray and put this into luminosity blending mode. We are seeing some crazy stuff here, but not enough. We need to emphasize this by adding hue and saturation adjustment layer and boost the saturation all the way up. And now we are seeing something that I like to call a thermal camera view. So I'm hot here, not like, you know, okay, I'm warm. And uh, in order to match color properly, now you can see that colors are not matched at all because I need to be in the same tones as the background right here. And then I will be matched to the background. And to do that, there are a few ways. What I like to use is I like to go with selective colors, clip to affect only the model. And I will use just whites, neutrals, and blacks. So whites represents highlights, neutrals, midtones, and blacks, shadows. Okay, let's go from the blacks. And basically I will move these sliders except the last one, the black slider. And by moving this, I like to match the colors with the background, as you can see. But we need to, before that, we need to see what are the dark parts of, of the background. So this is the dark part of the background. This right here, this is not because we have a lot of white across, but basically this, this, this. And if we go back with these helper, helper layers, we can see that Basically, the shadow needs to be some kind of cyan greenish look, something like, like that. Okay, and let's go here. And in order to do that, I will introduce cyan a little bit. Something like that. We can always, uh, we can always uh, change it. So let's see. Okay, this maybe like that. And yellow. Maybe, maybe like that. So it's almost there. Uh, what What is really important about this technique is that you will see now when I'm changing the midtones, I will, I will change a few shades here on the shadows because there are a lot of midtones uh, present uh, present here in, 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 in the kind of shadows. So for this, I will add, I will add, I don't know what I will add. Let's see. So midtones. These are midtones, here are midtones, and the midtones are basically green, so we need to make them green. So opposite of this, I will go probably like, like that. Then I will go like this maybe, and I will go like that. Not bad, let's go to the highlights. And for the highlights, I like to go and see. My highlights are basically this. Uh, this is washed out. We cannot see this because there are no information here. This is completely burned out here, but something like, 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 I don't know, maybe here, here, let's see. Something like yellowish, something like yellowish. All right, so let's, go back here and go to like this maybe um maybe and i want to go with the yellow a lot like that okay so before we did this this was crazy but now it's more blended to the scene and now when we disable these two layers, you will see the model, it's more appealing to the, the colors of the scene. This is before you can see now it's more magenta, but this is more, more greenish look. And uh, you can spend a little bit more time tweaking this, but you will have really, really nice results. And that's what I really like about, about this. Right, so this is how, this is how you can match the colors and match the lights, create the proper shadows and pay attention to perspective and you will get really nice results. Before we finish this, I have a few other things to show you, but it's, we already 
took so so many time here so much time here i want to show you something these are the images from my monthly challenge that i'm having on my youtube channel and there are some amazing ideas so this is one of really great ideas great imagination but i just want to show you how missing these things that we uh, talk about today are not making good final results so there there is a lot of mess here for example let's talk about just just the lights uh, we have this light source right here but no lights from that we have this kind of light source but not no lights from that we have the background and big moon and okay this we can say okay this is okay this is okay but then we have the lights that is coming from this direction from left upper left to to here but then the light from the upper right here it's com complete mess so this is not good and uh, the colors are not matched together. And if you match everything just by, by applying these basic things that we talked today, you can improve this a lot. So for example, this one too, uh, perspective is, is off from the model and from the background and the lights, the colors, everything is off. Also, uh, look at this. The light is coming from the back, obviously, because this is the brightest part of the model, but the shadow is coming opposite. So. The shadow is coming like the main light is from the front and uh, similar here we have the light that is coming from some kind of sun right there but again it's too soft and uh, it's a little bit uh, we can say it's okay but it's not okay then we have this model then we don't have any kind of shadow is it crazy great ideas but lacking of this kind of basic stuff we have a moon and we have the shadows coming from like the moon is right here and then the shadow is even more towards the right i don't know for for what reason but that's where uh you are making a lot of mistakes and also here the shadow is coming like from here so uh these are the examples that i just want to introduce uh these these like basic mistakes that people are doing with some great ideas also here the light is coming from the back but the shadow is coming from the front uh, right direction and uh, the shadow in the forest is different the light is different it's everything is completely off and also the perspective is off and also uh, perspective is okay it's okay it's not off but uh, the colors are not matched etc so basically by just applying few basic things you can you can match things together and create much more believable final result and uh, remember one thing and uh, the your goal is not to make it perfect because we cannot make it like perfect like it's in nature maybe certain people can really do it but but usually let's say that the we average people we cannot make it perfect but we can make it uh, we need to fool the viewer's eyes. That's the point. We need to fool the viewer's eyes uh, to uh, that to, to, to viewer to think uh, to make viewer think that that's okay. Well, that, that, that's really like one one shot from a camera. Like that's it. Everything belongs together. It doesn't matter if this is a fantasy art or this is uh, like science fiction art or some realistic uh, situation on from everyday life. Whatever the our our goal is to fool the viewer's eyes okay now we'll, uh, call Vicente back uh, here and then we will have some Q&A I will answer your questions so if you have some questions now is the time to type it down okay Vicente thank you Nemanja and yeah just as Nemanja said the webinar is not over yet so we are going to go into the Q&A section but for those of you who will be leaving now I just want to say again uh, thank you for coming and uh, thank you again to Nemanja for the fantastic uh, really tutorial on on everything with Photoshop in an hour and a half to cover so much uh, to cover so many details and also across different uh, different platforms. Uh, I personally love the the work with the color wheel as well was was really really fascinating. Um, to all of you, as a reminder, you have the ten percent discount code which you have here. Again, we'll also be sending it by uh, sending it by email to all of you, and that will be valid for seven days. Uh, if you enjoy today's webinar, we always have more webinars and more events coming up all over Europe. Uh, we have a link here that you can check on the bottom bottom right with upcoming webinars. Make sure to subscribe to Nemanja's YouTube channel as well to get content just like this uh, on, a, on a regular basis as well. 
And uh, yeah, we're so we're we're really thrilled by the uh, by the reception from all of you, and we're really looking forward to welcoming welcome you all at at future events. So, with that being said, uh, let's go on to the Q and A. You have the Q and A box in front of you. Feel free to answer to ask all the questions that you have of Nemanja. Nemanja, I give it back to you. Thanks, Vicente. Okay, so some some things we already addressed here, but for example, do you use a Wacom tablet? For drawing and uh, have you used an iPad for drawing? If so, which one do you prefer? Well, uh, I'm using Wacom tablet or any other tablet uh, works great. There are now currently in the market really big variety of different tablets that are really, really good like Huion, Wacom, uh, XP Pen, an XP Pen, uh, Xense Lab, uh, etc. They're all Gaumon and so on and so forth. They're, they're all really good. And uh, I prefer to use Wacom, tab Wacom tablet, or when I say tablet, I mean Wacom because I'm using it from 2007, I think. And uh, because it's much easier to draw, it's more natural to draw with the pen than with the mouse, and uh, you have control of the pressure, etc. And it's really, really nice when you get used to it, but it takes time to get used to it. Uh, I'm using iPad for sketching. I'm using iPad for, for sketching, and then I transfer the sketch to Photoshop and then uh, make photo manipulation out of the sketch. I'm I'm not I'm not working on an iPad. I have Affinity, uh, sorry Affinity Photo on iPad, which is a similar thing like Photoshop because I like it more than Photoshop on iPad because it's much uh, better and has more options, etc. Until Photoshop makes it better version, I don't know. But I can do their photo manipulations. But I just iPad with a computer no. Tablet is is the main thing that I prefer. Okay, are, uh, aren't the aren't the three basic colors yellow, red, and blue? Not not green. Yeah, that that's true. We learn in school that there are three basic colors, and that's yellow, red, and blue. And the first color wheel is uh, is um, designed by Sir Isaac Newton in 1666, and uh, we had those three primary colors. And uh, those are still three pr primary colors, but in digital world, uh, they switch to red, green, and blue instead of yellow, green, and, and, and blue. And uh, this is how it is in order to make, um, I, I presume, easier color mixing, etc. So this is this is the digital digital version version. Okay, so um, can you show again how you created the thermic version mode vision mode? Step before putting saturation. I just I just use the gray layer. So let's do one more time. I created an empty layer. Press Shift and Backspace, or let's go here. It's uh, I edit fill, okay, and then choose fifty percent gray and press OK, and I put this into the luminosity blending mode. Also, I have a full tutorial about that on my YouTube channel, how to match colors in Photoshop. Search it, you, you'll find step-by-step -step instructions there. Oh, oops. Okay, then. Um, okay, that's it. Um, what is the average time to become a professional in editing shadows? Well, that's that's really hard to answer because that depends on your skills. That depends on how much time you are spending in front of a computer practicing. There are people that are really bad in this and they dedicated their time uh, to practice, 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 and they're becoming real master of, of creating shadows and lights and everything. So basically the key is to practice. And uh, if you spend, I don't know, a few hours per day for next month, you will be really good. Maybe you need two months, but definitely if you're spending half an hour every week, you will take a few years. So you need to be dedicated to something in order to um, get better, really good. Thank you, Nemanja. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's see. Is it possible to send the session recording for the... Okay, this, the, this recording will not be sent to you guys, but it will be later on YouTube. So it will be on YouTube, so you can watch it later. I don't know how much later, a month or something like that. Okay, uh, this is again the same question. Uh, 
When I use camera raw filter at the end of my photo manipulation, I can get stuck on what to enhance change. I know something it's a bit off, but not sure what is uh, what to improve a bit. Any suggestion? Well, th that depends on uh, from situation to situation, depend on uh, your overall look, what kind of uh, mood you want to achieve, uh, etc. So I cannot answer directly to that question because I don't see, I'm not seeing your photo. I don't see that uh, uh, example right there, but uh, the key is again to practice and to look the examples online. You have a lot of tutorials on my YouTube channel, so you can you can see what I'm doing there. But basically, the key is to practice and to know what you want to achieve. If you're just going blind and moving sliders, you can still get decent result. But if you know I want to create a dramatic, cold look, for example, or like some kind of cinematic, greenish tint look then you know what to do. You can maybe go to the, the color temperature and make it cooler, then go to color grading and uh, add a little bit more cool tones to the shadows, maybe uh, change something, add more contrast, etc., and uh, add more vignette. I don't know. It depends from, from the file to the file. So you need to practice it. Also, what is the most used software for your work? Well, Photoshop is the place where I combine everything together. I use a lot Blender. I, I used to use Cinema 4D, but uh, I switched to Blender just because Blender is a free software and became really, really good. Some some great uh, uh, movies are done in Blender, etc. So it's really great software and it's completely free. So. Uh, I'm using also ZBrush for certain things, not for my YouTube tutorials, basically, because, you know, uh, when I'm doing project for a client, I usually spend depends of complexity of the photo manipulation, but from week two, three depends what we are doing. So that's impossible to, to do uh, in 20 minutes or 10 minutes or maybe five minutes, like most of uh, people there like to to watch five minutes tutorials, so it's impossible. So for serious work, I, I use Marvelous Designer, ZBrush, uh, Blender, Photoshop, and there are a few other softwares that I like to use, like uh, uh, Substance Painter and others, but basically Photoshop is the main tool. Okay, uh, I don't have any uh, question, but I wanted to say thank you, Nemanja, for uh, thank you, Nemanja, and thanks to BenQ webinar. You're really welcome. Thank you for participating. Okay, uh, how do you blend a puddle into another image and uh, image that didn't originally have uh, that there and make it look real? Well, <laughs> the simple answer you will not get right now because I need to see the image where you want to blend it. Depends on the light condition of the puddle. Believe it or not, there is a light condition there, so it needs to match the background, it needs to match the perspective, and uh, from example to example, but it's not, I cannot straight answer something, so something that is um, uh, abstract. Okay, Nicola, where do you think the inspiration, uh, where do you think the inspiration for your works come from mostly? Mostly, <laughs> Mostly, I don't know, I like to read books and I like to put some scenes from some, some books uh, in, in my photo manipulations, but also uh, I like to, to watch movies, also everyday scenarios, everyday life scenarios, just emphasizing something, make it more, more scary or more comic or something like that. Uh, can make really nice, you can make really nice photo manipulation out of that. Also depends if I'm working for a client or YouTube video, uh, depends. But all around the places so there are a lot of things where you can you can uh, find some inspiration but uh, reading is really important people are not reading these days as much because you know reels tiktok etc are making uh, people having less and less attention and uh, that's not good and people are becoming less and less capable of uh, concentrating on something for a long period of time and uh, obviously reading is something that you need to do at least hour a day, one hour of reading is nothing, but uh, reading will help you a lot improving your creativity and imagination, a lot. Because when you're reading, you're imagining things and it's working differently than when you're consuming the content from, from your phone or from from a computer. Oh yeah, 
did you ever do some work in product app design? Mm, yes, I did uh, 10 years ago or so. Yeah, 10 years ago I did for beers, for coffee, but I, I stopped that. Uh, okay, did you, tie, did you try incorporating neural filters in your recent manipulations? See? See you soon in Kia. <laughs> Milos, Milos, uh, I don't use neural filters. I don't know why. Maybe habit. Uh, I just forgot that they are there because I have all other tools that uh, I need. Neural filters, I tried. I tried uh, the, the depth of field. It looks good. But for for some reason, maybe the habit, I'm I, not using them. Nothing else. I don't have anything against them. Uh, mm -hmm. Will the video be uh, presented? Okay, I already answered that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, can you say my channel that I started in a few months? Photoshop. Okay. What? Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh, thank you for uh, very much for answer. You're welcome. Uh, okay, D uh, did you learn all of this in a school or you're on your own? Well, I learned everything on my own. I started in 2000 and then YouTube didn't exist yet, and I learned everything on a harder way by trials and error, uh, experimenting by myself and uh, it took me a while. Today you can learn much, much faster and become better really faster than, than, than I did in 20 years ago. But uh, also I finished the Faculty of Graphic Design later much later when I was already 10 years into this, I just finished it because I want to finish something to have a paper, some degree, if somebody asking me for that, but that's, that's why. Okay. In Blender uh, is Blender required for this and how can it be used without Blender is not required for photo manipulation. Blender is just a bonus tool where you can create something that you, that you, uh, that you will implement in your work. So for example, you're doing science fiction art and, um, uh, you cannot find a proper spaceship online that you want to put it in your scene. Then you can go to Blender, create your own spaceship, or if you don't have a lot of modeling skills, you can go, there are some websites like CG Trader, for example, and uh, purchase a 3D model already created with materials and everything, and just light the scene, put a camera, uh, set everything in the right perspective, render it out and export it as a PNG file and then put it in Photoshop and use it for your photo manipulation. But it's not a must, it's just a bonus tool. As I already said at the beginning, the more tools you know, the more fun you have in this endless world of creativity. Uh, okay, let's see, are there free 3D CGI stocks? I know, uh, yeah, they are free. Uh, Turbo Squid and uh, CG Trader both have some free stocks. Also, um, Polyheaven have some free, uh, basically, you're seeing my screen, uh, basically, no, it's here. Uh, p -p 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 this, all these models are, let's bring back this, all these models are completely free from polyheaven.com, uh, I think. Uh, so, they're free resources, but not as much as free photos because it takes a lot of time to create a 3D model and to texturize it, to, to add materials and textures in proper way and then to give it for free. People are doing, um, spending a lot of time making that and that's why they are selling. There are some really low prices. You can find really great models for 5 to $10, but uh, they're not free. Uh, Let's see this. Uh, have you ever used a dual screen setup in your workflow pros and cons using one screen? Well, that's a great question. I'm always using dual screen, uh, but I'm always working on one screen. So I have main monitor. Uh, if I'm on if I'm on my PC, I have PC uh, with two monitors, and I work on, always on one screen. And on another screen, I have. Uh, my reference images, my ideas, my sketches, etc. Or, I don't know, open what, uh, Viber, or WhatsApp, or any other Facebook Messenger or something that where I'm talking to people, etc. 
uh, when I'm working on a laptop, like I'm doing now, I always work on two screens on, lap on my laptop screen because it's more, I have all the sketches, etc. blah, blah, blah. And I'm working on the main, main screen. For a long period of time in my life, I only use one screen to work with. And uh, when I switch to two screen setups, setup, mm, you just have more space, more screen real estate to put all your things that you want. So that's the benefit. But uh, also just one, one monitor is pretty cool. I can do that without any issues. But now my brain is used to, to have all the reference images and sketches on one screen and just working and just checking like that. So just a habit. Okay. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. I'm still using Photoshop C CS3 because my PC is trash. <laughs> um, will using these older softwares affect? Yeah, the new new Photoshop uh, versions are much better. For example, the algorithm for uh, subject selections uh, is different. The colors uh, science is a little bit improved. Also, there are other options that you don't have there, etc. But you can still work in your version of Photoshop. Just the new version is really better. Uh, Ana, hvala, nema na čemu. Hvala za besplatni webinar, nema na čemu. That was in Serbian. Uh, saying you're welcome for the webinar. Uh, okay, let's see. You mentioned the shadows to get the lighting right, but we should also add light on the top of the head. Yeah, exactly. Although we we'll change lighting on the character example. Uh, yeah, we 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 should get. Uh, where is the example? Oh yeah, we should get a little bit of light here, but uh, because of the time of this webinar, you know, just making this photo manipulation right, it would take me, I don't know, an hour or so, uh, maybe more. So this is just showing you basics, but you're completely right. Yeah, there are a lot of things that we need to work here. Okay, thank you, you're very welcome. Do you have any camera brands uh, as a professional when you shoot uh, blend, uh, blend projects? or brand, I don't know. Uh, I'm using Fuji cameras. I'm using Canon and Fuji cameras, but mostly Fuji cameras uh, because I love them. I love the Fuji color science. In the past, I used Nikon, I used Canon. Uh, also, I'm using Sony from time to time, but my, my main camera is Fuji X-T4 and I love the lenses and all these. You cannot see everything, but all these lenses and I have a few others are from Fuji and I really, really love that camera. Okay, so... I wish you the best for your YouTube channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, let's see this. Mm, when did you start your career in the photo manipulation and uh, just start manipulation? Okay, yeah, already, already, uh, I already answered that, but uh, I started 20, 22 years ago and I went through all of different ways of design uh, and uh, doing first photograph, photo manipulation, then photography, then combined both. Then I did a lot of commercials for big companies, etc. And uh, then I profile to just photo manipulation niche because I love that most. No, I'm not active on LinkedIn at all. Zero. Is GIMP good for photo manipulation? Uh, believe it or not, Jovana, I never use GIMP. I never open GIMP, never install it, just because I have Photoshop, no other reason. I see people are doing great things in GIMP, uh, but I don't know, I don't know uh, if, if there is um, all the tools and everything that, that I, can, I can use there, so I cannot answer that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Okay, let's see. Uh, Windows vs Apple, which OS is better for Photoshop in terms of optimization and smooth experience? I use both equally. I, I don't have preferences. So for the laptop, I like, uh, I, I'm currently on Mac, but I have a Windows laptop too. So I like both uh, and they're pretty much, yeah, I, don't, I don't see any, any particular difference between these two. Uh, what helped you develop sense of 
shadows in pictures? That's a great question. We'll just practice and uh, and looking in the real life scenarios. So uh, still today, I'm making a lot of mistakes in shadows, but uh, because uh, usually because uh, just lack of the time or just rushing to finish something. But uh, I, I like to to uh, just watch the the things in my studio or outside how the shadow how the light behaves and try to remember that and implement in my photo manipulations. Okay, design zona forum. I mean, yeah, what design zona forum? Design zona forum for it's a forum of uh, for our, our here uh, here people in Balkan, but. Uh, I I used to to hang up there hang out there a lot. I know how many years ago, fifteen or something like that. Okay, where uh, will there be other webinars like this? Yes, it will be for sure. I follow the YouTube channel. I like Holy Bible, but uh, it's uh, nice to be about that. Okay, so yeah, uh, there will be more webinars like this. We had it uh, in the past also. You just need to follow me. Instagram, YouTube, and uh, you will get you will get a notification when this this uh, is happening next time. Can you make a video how uh, to blend an object if the colors and lights are completely off compared to the back? Uh, actually, I I wanted to show that today, but because lack of the time, uh, I skipped that part. But uh, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot a lot of muscling to to make it happen. Maybe I will do a video about that. Uh, how can I make a career out of photo manipulation and Photoshop stuff? My parents are asking. Well, that's that's a great question. You can do a lot. There, there are a lot of uh, commercials. A lot of companies are making commercials that are uh, uh, that 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 they that blah 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 <laughs> that they want to implement photo manipulations or co composites. In, and I did a lot of that uh, in the past and in these days, etc. So the point is to um, make them, the, those companies know that you are existing. And in order to do that, you need to practice it to become good, to gain certain level and skills, and then to put yourself out there, to make a website, to be on socials so the companies can uh, see your work, etc. And also you can just email uh, the companies that you're doing that and that and uh, show them your portfolio, etc. And email to 1000 companies and I'm sure a few of them will answer. But make sure to be good before you do that because uh, there is a great competition. If you want to, to work with big companies, then you really need to be good. Uh, uh, Photoshop or Affinity Designer? Photoshop. Uh, and the last question for today goes to Nadar. Let's see. Waiting for the next epic photo manipulation in your YouTube. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peja Legendo. All right. That would be it for today. I'm closing this Q&A. Thank you, everybody, for participating and for great questions. And uh, hopefully you like this webinar. And see you next time. Vicente, thank you one more time. Yeah, thank you, Nemanja. Thank you for everyone for coming. Uh, again, uh, it was fantastic to have all of you here. And like I said before, we have the discount code, which will all be, also be sent to you uh, via email, which is valid for seven days for the PD and the SW line. We're really looking forward to seeing you all at future events. So looking forward to, to that. You can see in the links here, we'll leave the room open for a little bit where you can check out. We have a Thank You Serbia Instagram. We have an AccuColor Instagram. We have the upcoming webinars page as well. And of course, you have to register and uh, subscribe rather to uh, Nemanja's YouTube. All the content you're, that you're seeing here, all this expertise, you can also see on uh, Nemanja's YouTube channel with just years and years of fantastic content going really into uh, into detail on so many different facets. And it's uh, it's always it's always fantastic to be to be hosting a webinar with him. So. From all of us here at BenQ, I want to say thank you to you, Nemanja, to all of you, and looking forward to seeing you at future events. Thank you, Vicente. Thank you, Benq. And of course, looking forward for the next webinar. Bye-bye. Great. See you all soon. Bye-bye.